on a very different track, what I wanted to talk to you about is the world of science and how the world of science is getting corrupted by big money and what implications this has. Now, science has had an exalted role in society. It has been considered to be this noble profession that solves problems, that searches for the truth, that addresses public interest, that looks at the poor. This is this noble, exalted position that science has always had in society. And that is the reason why scientists have also been trusted by society, why policymakers will shut their eyes and accept scientific data, scientific research to validate something. And this exalted position of science has been up to a point, and then suddenly it began to get corrupted. And we will go through some examples, because you encounter this in your life every day. When big money, when industry, when corporations, when multinationals, when they enter the world of science, they distort it, they create false data, they manipulate science and research to fulfill not the public good, not to serve the public interest, but to maximize profits. There's nothing wrong with maximizing profit, but not with subterfuge, not with deceit, not with corrupting science. Now, I am going to show you how in the big bad world, science uses, or, or, or big money uses science to create the kind of problems that you and I get to face. And there are standard techniques. By now, we know in the last 30, 40, 50 years, we know how this is done. Primarily, these corporations fund research. They give huge grants. They give fellowships to the most prestigious universities, names that you aspire to. I am not going to take names today, but if I were to take names, you would be shattered. Your illusions about these premier research and institutes and universities would be shattered. This is done by funding research to manipulate data. Big money uses money to influence and persuade scientists to write data that was not actually found in experiments. Another technique that they run for is to malign scientists who are doing genuine research and who unfortunately then are producing the kind of data that shows up bad science. They will criticize such research, they will attack such scientists, and because they, are so, they have such deep pockets, they're easily able to influence policy, policy makers, and then ultimately influence legislation. Now, the kind of things that happen, um, I think there are two examples that all of you might even know about. One is the pharmaceutical industry, the big pharma. And big pharma has a lot of blood on its hands. Big pharma has also done some decent work, but we're talking about how science is corrupted by industry. Now, big pharma deals typically with top-notch universities, and publishes astonishingly in top-class journals. So think of the best possible journals in your field. And big pharma, big money, would publish in that to create the kind of credibility that's difficult to counter. So studies are designed in flawed ways, data is manufactured, and cover-ups have been done resulting in what? In deaths. There is an example of a drug to control arrhythmia, an, uh, a defective heart rate. During the 80s, and, and data was known, these, these drugs went through trials, and data was known that such drugs could be lethal. There is documentation that drugs like this would have cost something from 20,000 
to 75,000 deaths of patients who were taking these drugs in a span of about 80, uh, of two, 20 years between the 80s and the 90s. But there is one drug that caught the imagination of the world, and that was Kondagan, or thalidomide. Thalidomide was a drug that was prescribed for pregnant women to fight morning sickness, nausea. And I will show you what thalidomide did. This is what thalidomide did. All those pregnant mothers who took these drugs, there were 10,000 such births. Roughly half of these children survived. They were born with terrible deformities. And the thalidomide disaster that, that came to be known has gone down in the annals of medical research as one of the biggest blots on the pharmaceutical industry. The company knew. But in order to shore up profits, they did not um, make this information public. They allowed the sale and, and over-the-counter sale of this drug to continue. Big sugar. Research scientists showed that sugar was as deadly for hearts, heart disease as fat. But big sugar covered up this data and did not can I have the next slide, please? Did not allow this information to get out into the public that sugar raises blood triglycerides leading to arterial disease just the way that fat does. And then review studies showed this picture. If you look on the top, the US has the highest mortalities, the highest consumption of sugar and fat. And down below Japan, which has the one amongst the lowest consumptions of sugar and fat, has also the lowest mortalities. Now, you can see how science has gone uh, from serving the interests of the poor, from solving the problems of the needy, to maximizing profits and causing disease and death in this corruption of science. The junk food industry. Do you know how much the junk food industry spends on advertising? Take a guess. Take a guess. Million? Ten billion dollars annually just on advertising. And roughly two billion dollars of this is spent on advertising to reach children. With what? With sponsored studies, with data that shows that this processed food is not really harmful, and that goes on to say that if you have standards of sodium, sugar, fat, refined flour, that are high enough, it doesn't really harm children. Because what they've done through these, these manipulated studies, through these manipulated data, is to convince government and policymakers that a load of sugar is good for kids, and a load of fat and processed foods is good for kids. So government sets standards high, which enables them to sell all of this quite legally. You know the obesity epidemic, you know diabetes uh, in children, India is the world's leader in heart disease and type 2 diabetes. And the United States, which is a typical example of high sugar, high food, junk food, you can see what is happening to their young people. You've seen these grotesque pictures of obesity that is, uh, that is constantly in the media. The GM food industry. The GM food industry is again a place where you see the distortion of, of data, the manipulation of research, and the malignant attacks on scientists, institutions, universities, that are actually studying GM foods and their impact on health of animals. These are done through animal studies. All of this is trashed. Again, big money. Big money influences legislators. Big money influences policymakers. And when there is data to choose between public sector scientists and manipulated data from the corporations, I don't know what process that is, but policymakers tend always to pick the data of the corporations. There is a lot happening there that I don't know whether you're not aware of, but I think it's fairly public knowledge. But 
data that is, that is manipulated, science that is corrupted, science that is producing data to fit a certain goal, manages to get accepted in country after country. One of the worst offenders is big tobacco. Some of you may have done this kind of uh, work during volunteerships and internships, if you've ever done such things. Because in the health sector, tobacco is always held up as the example of the worst kind of manipulation of data, of science, and of research. And here is another example of the world's best universities that were given grants to do studies to show what? That tobacco was recreational, that tobacco was non-addictive, and that to tobacco was harmless. Nicotine had absolutely... The way that the scientists published these data in the world's best medical journals, anyone who can take the name of a medical journal that sits right on top of the list, these are the journals that published this. That nicotine was harmless, it was not connected to cancer, it was not connected to cardiovascular disease, and it was not connected to respiratory disease. This is the evidence that was put out. Public sector research then showed that 38 to 40 percent of cancers that were investigated were linked directly to nicotine, nicotine users, of which two-thirds were lung cancers. 34 to 35 percent of all heart disease that was investigated could be linked directly to nicotine use. And roughly 30 percent of respiratory disease that was documented could also be linked to nicotine use. Now today we know, after all the lawsuits and cases that have been filed, that indeed nicotine is poison. It is a far worse thing than smoking marijuana. I'm not trying to encourage you to go out there and dope yourselves out. But it is far better to dope yourself than to smoke a cigarette. I hope the Vice Chancellor and the Director sitting here is not going to take this against me. All I'm saying is giving you neutral advice. Marijuana doesn't do anything to you. And now you know that marijuana is being promoted as, as a medical uh, aid in fighting many diseases. And the last grotesque story that I'm going to tell you is about asbestos. Here is again, big money laying flat the world of science. Already in the 90s, in the United Kingdom, it was known that asbestos could be lethal even at very small doses. Very low exposure, asbestos could create horrific health problems. This research was suppressed. All the information that came out of med schools showing the connection between um, asbestos and lung disease, lung diseases from which patients could not recover. So from the 30s when this was known, till the 90s when regulation came, for 60 years the asbestos industry succeeded in suppressing all evidence that showed that asbestos was lethal. And what they succeeded in doing was to block regulation on asbestos. It's only now that asbestos has become banned. And even now it's being used, in, I think even in Sikkim you're using uh, asbestos pipes. But asbestos is a deadly, deadly poison. And the asbestos industry managed to suppress this information, did exactly what other industries have done, produce, f manufactured their own data showing that asbestos really does not do any harm. And the appalling thing is that all along they knew people were dying. I'm going to leave you with a last slide before we go in for comments. This, when the asbestos case was going on, was the deposition. When the prosecutor asked some Mr. Brown, whose name is not mentioned, do you mean to tell me you would let them work until they drop dead? And the asbestos industry representative said, yes. This is what big money has done to science. The reason I decided to, uh, thank you, the reason I decided to speak on this today, rather than genetics or the great benefits of organic agriculture, etc., 
was because I think we are going through our lives unaware of the kind of distortions that are taking place in the name of science. It's not only policy makers who get swayed by the fact that there is a research publication saying humongous amounts of sugar are safe. Smoking 50 cigarettes a day does not harm your health at all. This is to tell you that you as consumers have to be vigilant. As educated consumers, you have to be more than vigilant. You must be involved in policy making. Unless you're brain dead, you sort of know what is harmful and what is harmless. Watch, you're all studying technologies. Watch the literature to see whether it rings true. If you have studied science, you develop the intuition, you develop the skills to tell bogus science from correct science. I have studied biology and genetics, but I am capable, and as are you, or any, anybody who studied any science, of making the distinction, say, in chemistry, to see that something is illogical, it cannot happen. Your life's experiences tell you differently. So I will end by saying to you, to be intelligent consumers and to be intelligent citizens. You heard the earlier presentation on social media exhorting you also to be citizens. And I think those days are over when you can rely on big daddy, big money, big somebody to do the right thing. People don't do the right thing anymore. Big money very seldom does the right thing. So this is a precautionary kind of message to all of you that because you have an education in a technical subject and you have the opportunity to read on these things, please be vigilant and please participate in policy making. If the GM food industry is saying, oh, it, this is all quite all right, I mean, you can just eat gallops of this stuff and nothing's going to happen to you, read the other literature, inform yourself. I mean, does it sound logical to say that you can eat 12 candy bars a day and nothing is going to happen to you? Read on the evidence. And I think the time, social media is one way of doing it, and I think a very easy way of doing it. Tell your policymaker what you think. They are not exalted beings. And the time of that kind of participatory democracy is now. We, you, me, all of us have to participate in this democracy to make a better world. Thank you.